Hey everyone, Ray Sawbell, RaySawbell.com. In today's video, we are going to be going through Google Ads reporting, and more specifically, the predefined report section of Google Ads. This section allows you to look through a bunch of reports that Google Ads put together that it thinks is valuable to all of its users, and there's tons of reports and there's something there for everybody. If you're looking for something a little bit more custom, I'll have a link in the upper right-hand corner where last week I spoke about the custom reports within Google Ads. So if that's the kind of video you're looking for, stick around. I'll also have something, I'll also have chapters coming across the bottom of the screen. If you look to the track bar and you'll be able to see the different chapters of where to go within this report, because I'm gonna explain how to get there, the best predefined reports, and then how you can kind of tinker with them a little bit to your liking. The first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the Google Ads dashboard, click on reports, and then you're going to notice a predefined report section. Now, I'm going to actually showcase a different view because you can see there's going to be a ton of different reports here. I would say over time, you'll feel comfortable going to this section and knowing exactly where to go. But if you haven't spent a lot of time within the reporting section of Google Ads, there's a little bit of a more user-friendly version, we'll say. So if you go to reports and then reports again, you might remember this from my previous video. So if you wanna make a custom report, you click here. However, if you hover over to the right-hand side of your screen and go to view all, you'll notice that you're able to then click on that and then you're going to see a ton of different predefined reports. So I'm gonna expand a couple of these and uh, we'll make sure to talk through the best ones. But you'll notice that you can break down these by basic. So campaign, ad group, by time, conversions, ad extension, shopping, hotel, auction insights, display video. There's a lot of different reports that you can get in here and there's gonna be a ton of data in here. One of my recommendations would be to follow some of these tips that I'm going to include in this video, and they will also be down below in the description, but also consider spending just a little bit of time looking through some of these on your own, and it'll be very helpful for you just to kind of understand um, what the capabilities are of this reporting function, because it's pretty strong if you know exactly where to go. So my go-to report within this section here, I tend to go to the search terms report, which is in this basic sec section here, and this is just going to be a standard search terms report that you get within Google Ads. But the reason why this is so powerful is yes, you're able to change the date range to whatever you like. So here at the top of your screen, you can change the date. Let's say I do the last 30. You can then begin to plug and play the different information that you find helpful at a macro level. I can look at the entire account. And if you remember from my last reporting video, everything here is able to be manipulated and you can change it and it'll change the way your report looks on the left-hand side here. So let's say I wanna get rid of a couple of columns. I know I don't want to have the search terms match type because for purposes of this report, I don't mind it. So I can either drag this over to the right-hand side here, let go of it, and now it's gone. Or I wanna also get rid of this added and excluded column. I can click on the drop-down arrow and go to delete. Both do the same thing. If I'm moving quickly, I'll tend to just kind of, you know, move in and out and fly and just delete the uh, ones I don't want. So just this is a really simple way to just really simplify that report and give you just the information that you need that's right in front of you. Just like in the last video, you're only as good as the filters that you have on in segments. So one of the first things I like to do is sort by a column that I care about. And the search terms report, for those of you that are not aware, the search terms report will give you all of the queries that people are searching on Google, that exact term, fire it back here, and then you can filter it by the relevant information. When looking at search query reports, there's a hundred ways you can do it. I typically personally like to look at click-through rate to see if there's areas that have poor ad copy. I like to look at conversions to see where all my conversions coming from. And then I like to look at conversion rate to see if I can expand upon that or duplicate those efforts elsewhere. So for purposes of this exercise, I'm going to want to look at my um, lowest converters to see where may I want to exclude some of my traffic. Now, the way I might do that is I would sort by cost, go high to low, and then the next thing I can do is I can then filter out conversions that are less than a certain amount. So right now I have my top spending search terms, and I can begin to filter out anything that is less than three conversions. So what we just went ahead and did is I am looking at my top spending search terms that have received less than three conversions. And now I can begin to look at this a little bit further and say, is this a strong performing keyword? 
One more metric I may want to add here is conversion value over cost or ratio or your ROAS. Um, it could be called a bunch of different things. But in this example, you can see I spent 170 bucks and I only got 1.25 back on every single dollar I spent. So you can see like this specific search term has not worked as efficiently for me as this one. This one's almost working twice as hard than this one. And the reason why this is so important is because you're able to then drill down to this, you know, surgical level, get a little surgical here. And then you can then say, I want to either kill this search term because it's not relevant. I want to negative out the keyword. Um, I want to expand upon it and make it work for me. Or I want to change my strategy a little bit. There's like 100 plays in your playbook that you can kind of pull from. It's really going to change based on what you're doing. But the reason why this fundamental reporting section is just so powerful is if you look at this at a macro level, you're not just drilling in on like one like tiny little sector. You're looking at your entire account. So I love to come here to just be able to assess like accounts very quickly. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click this arrow in the upper left-hand corner to kind of back out to the previous screen that I was on. I'm going to click on View All to get all these reports again. And the next report I like to go to is my Conversion Action Name Report. Now, the reason why this report is very beneficial is for accounts that have multiple conversion actions like phone call, transaction, form fill, store visit, all of those, this really breaks it down. Now in this specific client example, we only have transactions here, but the reason why this is powerful is because you can start to break down very specific campaign names again, and we can say this campaign, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag and drop these. Um, I think I mentioned this before in my last video, but you can drag and drop these and move them around as you see fit. You can see that these specific campaigns generated these transactions. Now, the reason where this becomes powerful is if you have multiple conversion actions. So if I can, I can see this campaign generated this many phone calls, this one got me this many transactions. And then again, it's doubling down on where things are working and then fine tuning things to make things work even better for you. So it's just all about optimization. It's all about the small gains. And then how do you make those compound over time? So the conversion action report is one that I like to look at a lot. And the final report I'm going to be showing you guys today is mainly for e-commerce. So if you have shopping campaigns that are running, and if you have a Merchant Center account and you're running either shopping campaigns or Performance Max campaigns where shopping is running as well, you can start to get category level placement reports or product type reports. And the reason why I love this report so much is because it's really able to time chart out how specific product types or SKUs or brands or whatever how they're performing and how you can see how they're doing over time and how you can fix those situations. So let's look at that a little bit more in detail. So if you go to the shopping product type report right here, it's going to show you all of the product types. Now I'm going to kill out uh, product level two and three because all I wanna look at is the first level here. Again, I wanna reduce the noise and I want to look at um, conversion value over cost again, which is my return on ad spend. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at uh, five or six different product types here. I'm seeing um, very basic information along with the ROAS, but if I wanna look at a longer time frame to see how things are trending, so if I'm looking at like a two or three month long time period here, I can start to plot out on a time series chart here. So if I click on table, you can choose to plot this out on a, t on a time series chart and I can look at the product level and then I can begin to look at cost and ratio or conversion value over cost. You can plot out anything on this chart if you want, if you wanna see how clicks are doing, if you wanna see how cost is doing. I typically for e-commerce clients like to look at cost and conversion value over cost because if I'm looking at those two metrics, I can get a sense of where my spend is going and where my like highest efficiency returns are coming in as well. Another option might be conversions if you just wanna see where the pure amount of conversion is coming in from. So if I look at these two metrics here, you'll notice that this kind of looks like a, like a heart rate monitor a little bit, right? Like you can kind of see just a bunch of information. This by itself, not very useful, let's be real. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of manipulate this data a little bit to make it look a little bit better. I'm also going to expand this out a little bit so I can get um, a little bit more data on my screen. What you can go ahead and do is you can click on these campaign, I'm sorry, on these product types, and your graph is going to change accordingly. So if I want to see how the cost is going for this one campaign, for this one product type, here's how it's doing. I can do the same thing for conversion value over cost. I can see how that's trending. And I can also change this from daily to weekly just to get like 
less variety in my peaks and valleys in my graph, it should look a little bit better and not as messy, and I should get more trends. So if I look at it this way, it looks a little bit better because I'm able to see a weekly trend and I've got a lot more data versus just like one like section by itself. So the reason why this is important, if I look at this one product type, I can see the trend of it from a cost standpoint. I can also look at it from a return standpoint. It's been pretty steady if you look at it, like the, the plot line here is pretty even throughout the entire time. It's not like we're seeing a major nosedive somewhere. So let's see if I can find one that has a, yeah, here you go. In the week of June 6th and early June, this specific product type just bottomed out. Now you can kind of see that rebounded and it's actually on its way back up here. But if this trend was continuing downwards, this is something I would want to look at further and analyze and say, why is this exact product type performing so poorly for me? So that's the power of this report and something that I come to frequently when analyzing shopping campaigns. Now, like I said, there are like a hundred of, of re custom and predefined reports here. I would recommend just kind of tinkering around, playing with them, look at the ones that may be relevant to your business. If you want to go the custom route, you can go custom as well. Again, there will be a link in the upper right-hand corner where you can watch my video on how I set up these custom reports. But let me know how you tend to use these reporting sections within Google Ads, specifically the predefined reports. Let me know what I missed. Let me know if I can clarify anything. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing. It helps recommend this type of content to awesome folks just like yourself. So until next time, I appreciate you very much, and I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.